Lori. Welcome to Behavior Education. Tonight I'm going to be doing a clean out of the enclosures and a feeding of our four rainbow boas. We have two Brazilian rainbow boas, Epicrates syncria, and we have two Colombian rainbow boas, which are Epicrates maris. And unlike the species of Morelia that we have and some of the colubrids that we have that we're target training and station training, that are visible and out a lot and that come out of the enclosures on their own with training, the rainbow boas are a very shy species and they inherently hide a lot. And I think that if you have their enclosures designed correctly, you will hardly ever see your rainbow boas. Occasionally I get glimpses of them in the middle of the night and I feed them usually every two to four weeks. Um, sometimes they'll be out more when they get hungry and when they get really, really, really hungry, especially one of my Brazilian females, she'll actually perch up here in this tree and on her PVC perch in ambush position. But typically, I hardly ever see these guys out. And it's because they hide a lot. And I've got the enclosure set up in such a way that they're able to do that. So their enclosures are set up so that there's a dry hide on the warm side and the cool side of their enclosure as well as humidity hides on the warm side and the cool side of their enclosure. And then in the middle, they have a water dish that they can also hide underneath. And then I have some miscellaneous um, fake plants and like little logs and things in each enclosure for them to climb around on and hide behind. And then I have a PVC perch in each enclosure for them because they are semi-arboreal. Although, as I said, I don't see them out a lot. Now, this is the female Brazilian rainbow boa. Her name's Rowena. And typically, I find her underneath the water dish. So that's just where we're gonna look first. And there she is. And what I do with these guys is I just take them out by hand. And I put them in a separate tub where I feed them and where they can sit while I clean their enclosure. And if you'll notice, I should have, I should have showed you this before, but even in their temporary holding bins, I have some fake plants for them to hide in so that they feel comfortable in their temporary bins. And they're used to this. This is the way that I've handled them since they were babies. They know that they eat in here. And so what I do is I put them in a separate location. I give them their food. I give them time to eat. And, and then while they're doing that, I clean out their enclosures. I refresh their humidity boxes. I refresh their water. And I mist the substrate in the enclosures, which in their enclosures is Echo Earth. And I do that every um, two to four weeks or as needed. If I see that it's dried out immensely, I will mist and refresh water and humidity boxes in between feeding times. Okay, the second one I'm gonna get out is the male Brazilian rainbow boa, and he is typically in his humidity box, and he's there. Now this is his baby humidity box, the one that he's had since he was an, a little baby. Um, he's over a year old now, and he has two big humidity boxes in here, one on the cool side and one on the warm side, however, he still is always in his little baby humidity box. He still stays in here all the time. Um, I guess he'll probably do that until at some point he outgrows it. Um, but this is his favorite place to be. Rowena and Kilgara's enclosures all squared away. They're the two Brazilian rainbow boas and um, cleaning out Kilgara's, I found that he left me a nice whole complete shed inside one of his hides. So sometimes I find that when I clean, I like it better when I can tell right away that they've shed. The three females, the two Colombian and the Brazilian female, usually shed out in the open and I find it in the enclosure, but he He's my shyest um, rainbow boa, the male Brazilian. Oftentimes I don't find his shed until I clean like I did tonight, but it looks healthy. The eye caps are here, it's nice and whole. So that's great. 
And these guys, guys are great eaters. Um, they always eat right away. Um, they're usually done eating by the time I'm done cleaning. And they're typically very good about shifting right back into their enclosure. So I just open the end of their bin. And I don't know if you can see, he is going right back in without any prompting at all. So they're pretty easy to care for. Just unfortunately for snakes as beautiful as they are, I just hardly ever see them because um, they hide all the time. One thing I will mention is they're in reptile basics enclosures. And after having these now, I wouldn't buy them again. They don't stack exactly the way they're supposed to and it's difficult to open and close the doors of the ones that are on the bottom. So if you noticed, I had to lift up on this one in order to get this door closed and that's pretty inconvenient. Um, I ordered seven of these and I probably should have just ordered a couple to test them out first because after having the seven that I have and working with them now for a while, I wouldn't I would not buy these reptile basics enclosures again. I'm just um, not happy with some of the things about them and maybe I'll do an enclosure video one day and critique all the different brands of enclosures that I have, but um, they're working out okay, but I have to do things to tweak them in order to get them to work for me, like lifting up on these top ones in order to get the bottom doors opened and closed. And this is Rowena. She's the female Brazilian rainbow boa. And we will see if she wants to go back in on her own. Sometimes she stays in her tub because she wants seconds. She wants more food. Now she sees the doors open. I'll try and get out of your way. There she goes. So the portable tubs I have for them are um, really useful box brand and the lids open as well as the front and that makes it really convenient. And I do have just some fake plants in here for them so that they feel comfortable while they're in their temporary holding and they just don't feel like they're completely out in the open and exposed. So now I'm going to move on to the Colombian rainbow boas and this one is Valkris and I kind of never know where she's going to be. The, these two are less predictable than the Brazilians and these two are actually just a little bit more outgoing than the Brazilians. So sometimes she's in one of her humidity boxes. And it does not look like she is tonight, so she might be under her water or in one of her hides. And she's actually behind her hide back there. I'll go ahead and take her stuff out so I can clean it. Okay, so this is Valkris, and she's a Colombian rainbow boa. And I've had her and her sister longer than I've had the Brazilian rainbow boas, and they are about two years old. Valkris's enclosure is all ready for her to go back in it, cleaned it out, given her fresh water, refreshed her humidity boxes. And now I need to get up here and get Sola out. And that is Valkris's clutch mate. And I typically am never sure where she's at either because sometimes she's under her water bowl. She is very seldom in a humidity box, but she's usually in a hide or under her water dish. Here she is back there. I'm gonna go ahead and take her water dish out for cleaning and I'll come back for her. There she is. And again, she's a Colombian rainbow boa 
Epicrates Maris, and in some books it's its own species, and in other books it's a subspecies, Epicrates Syncria. So Valchris is done eating and her enclosure is all cleaned and ready for her. So we're going to put her back in. And they're all really good about shifting back into their enclosures on their own after they eat. I mean, they're just really easy snakes to take care of. I've never had an issue handling them. Although they're shy, and I don't think that they necessarily like being handled, they've never shown me so much distress at being handled that I would feel uncomfortable going in and, and getting them out. They know that they eat in here, and honestly, they're ready. As soon as I feed them, they eat right away. And they don't dilly-dally. And then when it's time to go back into their enclosures, as you can see, that they shift right back in. Before I feed the last one, Sola, I thought I would go over with you how I weigh them. So they each have their own tub with their name on it. You see this one has Sola's name on it. And I write the weight of the empty tub on here plus the fake um, plant that I have in there. So it's already pre-weighed at 701 grams. I just set the whole tub with the snake in it on here and it says 1,040 grams. I will turn this around, hopefully, so that you can see. And so then I will just write that down, that she's 1,040 grams, and then the tub is 701 grams, and so that means she weighs 339 grams. And so while I'm waiting for Sola to finish eating, I have someone who's being very nosy about what's going on. This is Benu. He is one of my Morelia bread lie, Centralian carpet pythons or Brettles pythons. And he was in the exercise area and he has since made his way over here to the area where I am cleaning and feeding the rainbow boas. And he's being very nosy. one to finish eating her enclosures clean and all ready to go Everybody's all set for another couple weeks or so. The top one is easy to close because there's no weight sitting on it, so I never have any issues with that door. The other three doors I do have issues opening and closing. Even though the enclosures come with spacers, they don't work adequately. And I've found that to be true with all seven of these enclosures that I have. They just don't fit together right. And I think uh, just don't work the way they're supposed to because I have a lot of difficulty opening and closing all of the bottom doors. And then one of the enclosures arrived damaged and I contacted the company and they sent me a replacement panel, not a replacement enclosure, but a replacement panel that I then had to take the old panel off and put the new panel on myself which kind of defeats the purpose of purchasing an enclosure that's supposed to come assembled. They're working all right. I just wouldn't buy these type again. So I keep track of their weights and what they've eaten on these little index cards on the cages. And I just write down every time how much they weighed and what they ate. 
and I also keep track of when they shed on here as well. Two-year-olds are eating either adult mice or weaned rats and the babies, I call them the babies, but the yearlings are eating um, rat pups or small adult mice. So this stand that I have the enclosures on, I absolutely love. And it's a stand that's made for the showcase enc enclosures, which I have for some of my other snakes. I have several of my pythons in showcase enclosures, but the stand is also working quite well for these enclosures. These stands come in different heights, all the way from six inches high, I think up to 24 inches high, or maybe even 36 inches high and they come anywhere from 24 inches wide up to five feet wide, and they have wheels on them. I really, really am happy with the stand. Um, I'm going to order more of these for sure. I wanted to just mention that if you're looking for a really good resource on rainbow boas, this is the book that I would recommend. I've found it very helpful since I've had these rainbow boas very scientifically um, written. It's got husbandry, natural history. It lists all the different subspecies of rainbow boas that are in the genus Epicrates. And I, I highly recommend this book if you're seriously into rainbow boas. And it's by Henry Belosa and Hans Isplinhoff. I got it on amazon.com, but if you just put in the title of the book in a Google search, I'm sure that you can buy it other places as well. But I do highly recommend this book if you care about your rainbow boas and you wanna take the best possible care of them. This is an invaluable resource about everything from basic care to reproduction. It also lists some common um, health concerns in here and diseases. So this would be my recommendation if you want to learn more about rainbow boas.